Today I've got for you 30 frugal tips, tricks, and hacks that you can do in your family and in your household that will lower your monthly expenses and put more money in your pocket. Hey everybody and welcome back to Lining Up Ducks. It is a rainy, dreary day here, so I thought I would take some time and film a video for you that I hope is gonna help you in your home and your budgets as much as this list has helped our family. I have tips for both men and women and home mixed all through here, so stay tuned to the end so you don't miss even one. All right, so let's start around your house. The top things and habits you can replace in your home. Number one is drain cleaner. We don't buy expensive drain cleaner anymore. I have found that simple salt and boiling water work wonderfully. The salt acts as an abrasive to clean the outsides of the pipe and the boiling water melts all of the nasty wax, body oils, and toothpaste that may be down clogging up your drain. And if it's a particularly bad clog, a drain snake is probably your best bet. Number two on our list around the home is store-bought cleaning products. We make our own cleaning products. They clean just great and they are so much less expensive. My husband wasn't really on board with this one when I first started making my own cleaner about two years ago. And now if we go into a space that has been recently cleaned with grocery store cleaning products, the smells just absolutely overwhelm us. If you don't like the smell of the homemade cleaning products, just simply add to it a couple of essential oils and it's going to smell great. Just as a disclaimer, this video is not sponsored in any way. We use all of these products in our home and I will be sure to link any product below in the description box if I mention a product by name. Number three on our list may surprise some of you, but we have ditched the K-Cups. We no longer use a Keurig. And I was the one that was super hesitant about this one. Confession time. I cannot make a decent pot of coffee if it is not measured out for me. So when we got our Keurig, it was great because I could make a cup of coffee. Now I've pretty much switched to tea, but my husband drinks a lot of coffee and we were going through a lot of K-cups in a month. We have switched to a Ninja and we love it. It has attached to the side of it a pre-labeled scoop that tells you exactly how many scoops to use for each size that you would be using. You can make everything from a small cup all the way to a carafe. The two things I love about it most are it's saving a good $20 a month in our grocery budget and I can easily make a cup of tea without it tasting like coffee as well. We have the one with the insulated carafe because we will not have a dishwasher in the next few months once we move into our RV. But if we had to buy it again, I would say to buy the one with the glass carafe because the glass carafe has a burner that will keep your coffee warm for longer and you can put it in the dishwasher. Number four on our list is kitchen gadgets. I do not buy unitaskers in my kitchen if at all possible. And when I say unitaskers, I mean egg slicers or garlic presses or juicers. I have found that it's just way easier for me to buy the pre-cut garlic. Yes, it is a little bit more expensive, but my hands don't smell like garlic and it cuts my prep time way down. As far as a juicer goes, roll your lemon, cut it in half, stick a fork in it. The fork acts like a juicer would and agitates the pulp of the lemon, getting as much juice out as a simple lemon and lime juicer and I don't have to make space for one more thing in my cabinets. Number five, we are in the process of changing over to. So this is the very last roll of paper towels that we have in the house and it's almost empty. Several years ago, we went to using flower sack cloths from Walmart as cloth napkins. They come in a pack of five and they are huge. Simply take a pair of pinking shears. I will link one in the comments below. Pinking shears are a sewing tool that is commonly used 
to cut fabrics so you don't have frayed edges. Cut the flower sack cloths in fours and you end up with 20 cloth napkins that you can just throw in a bucket after they are washed and reuse at every meal. So you may be wondering what we do for large spills around the house because we do have four very active children. We use chamois from the Dollar Tree. They pick up tons of liquid in this small little package. You can wring them out and throw them in the wash. They're in the automotive section of the Dollar Tree. And the other great thing that's in the automotive section of the Dollar Tree, these super soft cleaning cloths. They're great for smaller messes. They're a dollar a piece. And again, they're nice and big, great for cleaning rags. And you can cut them in half again with your pinking shears and have two for the price of one. Please subscribe to this channel for more videos surrounding family frugal budgeting and small living for a large family. Number six is bathroom sprays. We don't use these simply because we have four little children that would just go to town spraying stuff all over the bathroom, wasting a three or four dollar bottle of room spray. But you may be wondering what we use instead. My mom always told me that lighting a match will cover a multitude of smelly sins. No, we don't let our children play with matches. But if we walk into a room and they have made a stinky mess in there, we can easily get the smell out just by lighting a match. Number seven on our list is food bag clips. We are going to binder clips. Binder clips make a smaller package. You can buy a box of binder clips for the same price as one or two bag clips chip clips. Number eight on our list is laundry detergent. Right now I am working my way through some pre-bought laundry detergent that I bought with my our tax refund last year and if you have not seen our top 10 things to do with your tax refund to save you money I will link it above and below. I bought a year's worth of laundry detergent and I'm still working my way through it. Once those are completely done, I will be making my own laundry detergent and I will be sure to link in the comments below my favorite recipe. Number nine on our list is in the same room as laundry and for the last year, we have not used any fabric softener on our clothes. That includes liquid and dryer sheets. So what do we use instead? Wool dryer balls. If you want that great smell that comes with fabric softener, simply put a few drops of essential oils on these and your laundry will smell great. But the bonus that we didn't realize that we were going to get when we switched from liquid fabric softener to dryer balls, it's easier to get stains out. Our clothes are lasting longer, the colors are more true, we can easily get odors out, and our towels are so much more absorbent. All in all, our clothes are in so much better condition than they were when we were using liquid fabric softener. Number 10 on our list is specialty cookware. And I know I already said kitchen gadgets, but this is a little different. I am talking about large kitchen cookware. We cook a lot of Asian food in the house. Everybody loves it, but it's gonna have to change soon because our sweet baby, we're pretty sure she's allergic to soy and she cannot stay away from soy sauce. She loves it. But we cook all that Asian food with no wok. So what do we use instead? Any type of pot or pan that really conducts heat well. So a cast iron skillet, or a Magnolite pot or some type of Dutch oven. We choose a cast iron skillet and a Magnolite pot. It works great for splatters and splashes and does really good job of cooking the food at a very high heat. We also don't have a food processor or an immersion blender. Pretty much anything I do in a food processor for me and the way I cook is also able to be done in a blender. So I just have a blender. Number 11 on our list is something a lot of people are going to these days and that is cutting the cable. We have not had mainstream cable in our home for almost eight years. We did at one time turn cable on and off during football season but now we have a, a great digital antenna that he can get most of the games he wants and if it's a, a game that he cannot get over the antenna he goes to a local restaurant or we go visit family and friends. We do have Netflix that the kids can watch shows on and plenty of kid-friendly DVDs. Number 12 on the list is we no longer buy trendy clothes and we haven't for a number of years. My husband is the same way. He sticks to classic looks that never go out of style. I keep a very small wardrobe, so I want to make sure that all of the pieces that I add into my wardrobe are going to last me for a long time. If you're someone who is really into fashion, 
This tip may not work for you, but it works beautifully for me and I've been able to get many, many years out of a lot of the pieces that I have in my wardrobe. Number 13 on our list is for all of you viewers that have laser printers. I use a color laser printer for my Etsy business and those toner replacements can be crazy expensive. If you wanted to buy a brand name toner replacement for my color laser printer, it would be $278. That is $100 more than it would be just to buy a new printer. I buy generic toner for my printer and it still prints beautifully for all of the needs that we have, lasts great, and does not rub off. I will link down below my favorite place to get the toner and it's about $95 for the five toners that my printer uses. Number 14 on our list is souvenirs. We don't buy our children souvenirs when we go to theme parks or festivals. As you can imagine, if we let all four of our children buy souvenirs, everywhere we went, we would be forking out a whole lot of money. So what do we do? We do penny presses. The kids love it. They get to pick their design and you simply fill a mini M&Ms tube with alternating quarters and pennies all the way to the top and this will last them through a whole trip or more. They love collecting these and they love the process of making them, so it's a win-win for everybody. I will say the one place that we do buy souvenirs, but when on a very tight budget, is when we go to Disney, and that's because our family is a huge Disney family. We love it, but each of the girls gets $20 to put in their pocket for the entire trip, and that's all they have to spend for the entire trip. It's interesting to see how our children differ as to whether or not they buy the first thing they see or the last thing they see. Number 15 on our list is we do not buy the latest technology of anything. We have the same television that we bought seven years ago. It works great. Yes, it's missing its power button, but that's what the remote control is for. It still plays our Blu-rays and DVD great. We don't miss the 4K technology. We also don't get the latest and greatest gadgets. We don't have Apple Watches. Our iPhones are several years old and still working wonderfully. And we didn't get iPads in the house until a year ago when I was homeschooling the kids for a little while. It's just not something that we have missed and it has saved us a ton of money. Along the lines of technology is number 16. We don't have expensive cell phone plans. For many, many years, we had AT&T Wireless. It was a very expensive plan, costing us roughly $135 to $150 a month, and I just didn't feel like that we were getting value for our money. I would say about three years ago, all of the major cell phone companies started coming out with bargain carriers. So AT&T's bargain carrier is Cricket Wireless. Verizon's budget-friendly company is Total Wireless. And they're great. They use the same cell phone towers. I have the exact same coverage that I did on my old plan. You get to pick your data package. And we have fairly small data packages, which my husband doesn't love because he uses his every month. So if you use a lot of data, you might want a little bit larger package. When we swapped, we have saved $50 a month for the last three years and that is $1,800 that has stayed in our pocket. Number 17 on the list is one of the cornerstones of our YouTube channel and that is we live in a smaller space. We have a large family of six but we live currently in 1,600 square feet. We don't miss the larger space that we used to live in before. We have more family time because I'm not cleaning a larger house. We can do more things as a family because our utility bills are lower as well as our monthly rent or mortgage. Our kids love being together and they love sharing a room. Think of it this way. What are you saying no to in your monthly budget because you have said yes to living in a larger space? And what are the things that you could say yes to if you did live in a smaller space? Don't forget to comment below if you have tips and tricks you use in your family that lower your expenses on a monthly basis. I would love to try them out in our family. Number 18 is large birthday parties for our kids. When we had one or two children, I threw Pinterest worthy birthday parties. I mean, so cute. And don't get me wrong, I love still looking at everybody else's Pinterest-worthy parties. 
but I found that I was overly stressing about making it perfect. I was paying so much more for the actual birthday party for 30 kids than I was for my own child on her presents. So we just have decided to dial it back. We have home birthday parties or birthday parties at a park that are completely free. Our kids haven't missed it, not one bit. I still enjoy looking at all of my friends' Pinterest-worthy parties, but with four kids, this tip saves us a lot of money. Number 19, I may catch a little bit of flack on, but we don't give teachers gifts. If your kid is in school, dance, gymnastics, ball, cheerleading, sports of any kind, Christmas and year-end gifts for all of your teachers and coaches for your children can add up very fast. We try to keep a fairly minimal lifestyle, so giving a teacher or a coach something that they may or may not truly need or want in their home or their classroom to us feels like we're laying guilt on them for wanting to throw it away. So what we do instead is have our children write nice thank you notes and Christmas cards to their teachers, draw them pictures, and give them those at the end of the year instead. Number 20 on our list is backpacks. Yes, we buy backpacks for our kids at school, but when I was little, I remember going to the store before every school year and buying a brand new backpack. And I can vividly remember some of the crazier ones that I had. I think I actually had a Who Framed Roger Rabbit stuffed animal backpack in first grade, but when our kids started to go to preschool and on into elementary school, my husband and I purchased each of them a quality backpack, yes in fun colors, they are kids, for them to use and they have lasted years. In fact, I have the same Jansport backpack that I have had for the last 20 years. 23 years. It's in great condition. It all works great. And I know if it broke apart today, I could still send it back to Jansport and they would replace it for me. It's worth buying quality when it comes to a backpack. Number 21 on our list helps our budget out a lot over the year with six people in our family. We no longer pay for haircuts. Instead, I cut all of my girl's hair, with the exception of Sophie, because she has curly hair and I'm still learning, so my aunt cuts her hair. I even cut Scott's hair, which is super easy because he's in the military, and I cut my own hair. If you haven't seen my how to cut your own hair video, I will link it up here and in the comments below. That was my very first time cutting my own hair. It was super easy, but there is some hilarity in there of me breaking things as I am trying to cut my own hair. So be sure to check it out if you wanna learn how to cut your own hair. Number 22 is I don't use makeup remover. I instead use just my normal face cream that I use to moisturize my face on a daily basis. It's super simple to use. You just get a small amount of moisturizer and rub it all over your face and on your eye makeup really well and wipe it off with a dry washcloth. Super easy, saves space and money. Number 23 is for all you men out there. My husband does not use disposable razors if he can help it at all. So what does he use instead? He uses straight razors. He doesn't get the bumps that you get from the disposable razors pulling the hair out to cut it off. It's a cleaner shave and his skin's in much better condition. But what does he do if he needs a fast shave? He uses an old fashioned safety razor. It's weighted so it does exactly the same thing as a straight razor does as far as not pulling the hair to cut it off. And the replacement blades are incredibly cheap. We definitely keep them out of the reach of our children. You cannot take this or a straight razor onto an airplane. So if he does have to fly, we do have a backup inexpensive disposable razor for him to take with him. Don't forget any product I have specifically mentioned I am linking in the description box below so you can find whatever you're looking for very easily. Number 24, I had to see to believe. I have not tried this yet, but I am ordering what I have linked below as soon as I finish this video, and that is castor oil. Yes, you heard me right, castor oil. Over the last probably 
six or so years, you've seen Latisse and other lash lengthening and thickening serums on the market, and they are expensive. Castor oil does the exact same thing lengthens and thickens your lashes. You can get organic, natural oils with, again, no harsh chemicals. I had to see this to believe it. I'll insert a picture here of the befores and after on the product that I'm ordering, but I have a friend that showed me the results when I went to see her last month, and I could not believe it. She had very short, straight, thin lashes, and now she has thick, Full, longer lashes and all she has added is a little bit of castor oil to her lashes right before she goes to bed every night. Number 25 is still one for my husband. He does not use grocery store or drugstore shaving cream. Instead, he uses a pot shaving cream or a shaving soap. This is a much less expensive option and it will this small thing will last you a very long time. This is a Truffet and Hill, and so it's a more expensive shaving cream, but it's really excellent, and it does last for a very long time, and he doesn't wear cologne. This has a great smell to it, and there's no need for cologne. Number 26 is I no longer pay to have my eyebrows waxed. Every month, I was going to the salon and paying $12 or $13 with a tip, to have my eyebrows waxed because I generally hate plucking my eyebrows and successful at growing caterpillars on my face if I don't do anything. I tried the at-home wax and I didn't like dealing with the heat and it's gloppy and yucky. So what do I use instead? This. This is NADS, I think it's a sugar wax and it comes in a super easy tube. All you do is turn the dial to get a little bit of it out, wipe it on your brows. It comes with its own cotton strips for you to use. There's no microwaving, it heats up with your body heat and it works great. This one tube costs me less than what one month of going to the salon would have cost me to use all of this. Number 27 is I no longer go and get manicures or pedicures. First of all, my fingernails stink. They are awful, so I rarely got manicures anyway, except for when I was in college. Polish just doesn't stay on them. I'm too harsh on my hands having four children. But I did love to go get my toes done. But as my mother-in-law and my best friend can attest to, I am extremely ticklish. So it was a bit of a torture for me as well. So now I do all of my own pedicures at home, saving easily $30 to $60 every time I decide to paint my toes. Number 29 is I do not use shaving cream to shave. And as you know, you can't use nothing because it really kind of hurts. So what do I use instead? Hair conditioner. I was finding that with shaving cream, my legs felt smooth, but the chemicals in the shaving cream were irritating my skin. I have had fewer ingrown hairs. My legs are still just as smooth and it saves me a ton of money and I don't have one extra thing junking up my shower. Number 29 is a great tip that I wish I had started doing many years ago, but I do not wear a full face of makeup every day. I save my full face of makeup for days like this where I'm filming close-up shots or date nights. Other than that, everything I wear on a daily basis fits in this very small bag and takes less than three minutes to do. In my very small makeup bag, I have blush, lipstick and lip gloss, and mascara. This stuff is great. I used to use a drugstore mascara and a really expensive primer to make my lashes look longer. A relatively new company to the States, I think it's Pharmacy is the way you pronounce it. And it is $9, so it's the same as I was paying for my drugstore stuff, but I don't have to use the primer with it. And I still get longer lashes, they're more full, and it's European standard, so there's less chemicals in it. I'll have a link to this in the comments below because I have absolutely loved this. By not doing a full face of makeup every day, I'm saving a lot of money. My skin can breathe better on a day-to-day -day basis, but I still look like I have put some effort into my appearance by doing my three minutes 
three or four item cosmetics routine. Okay, everybody, last and certainly not least on our list is something super simple and easy. My husband has switched from expensive body wash back to bar soap. You can get three to six bars of soap, depending on the brand, for the same cost as one container of body wash. All right, everybody, that's it. My top 30 frugal tips, tricks, and habits that you can add to your family that we use in our family household that keeps our expenses down. If you like videos like these, please let me know in the comments below and I will come up with a few more for you and do another video soon. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.